Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Dr. Joey interviews Christian business professionals just like you to discover their secrets for working faith positive in a negative world. Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett. Faith Positive Nation, if you are a parent and you are working full time, you know that life can be a little bit challenging when you make that pivot and introduce another person into your family, right? Yeah, because sometimes you don't get to sleep at all at night and uh, you discover how much free time that you really did have before this little person has become the center of your universe, right? Today's guest has recently experienced that, in fact, within the last 12 months. And so he's this rocking, um, he's rocking in two ways, right? He's rocking as the marketing director for Austin Hardware and Supply. And then he is also rocking because he's got a new little girl to put in his lap. And so he gets to rock her. Her name is Victoria. His name is Tim Leeds, who is the marketing director for Austin Hardware and Supply located in Beaufort, Georgia. So Faith Positive Nation, help me welcome to Faith Positive Radio, Tim Leeds. Tim, thanks so much for being on today, buddy. Glad I can be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. So Victoria has got to be the most brilliant, most beautiful little girl ever born. I would say, yeah, ever. Yep. That's <laughs> ever. And she takes accurate. after her mom, right? Uh, yes. Not because I have to say that. <laughs> you better say that. <laughs> so before we started uh, recording this episode of Faith Positive Radio, Faith Positive Nation, Tim informed me that Sarah, his wife, spent eight years in the Army. He better say that his daughter took after her, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So, Tim, man, your world has really changed lately. So, by day, you're the marketing director of Austin Hardware and Supply, and by night, you are Victoria's dad and Sarah's husband. So, tell us about being marketing director for Austin Hardware. What's that like for you? It's awesome. Um, you know, marketing in general, I think, is a great um, career to be a part of. Right. Uh, especially, you know, especially I'm very creative and I love to tell stories. You know, I love branding. So just makes sense, I guess. But, you know, I would say it's a it's a dream job. I think being the voice of a company and helping portray that, whatever the values are, you know, mm. the products, the services <clears throat> and, and to do that different than others may be doing it um, is really what I love about it. Wow. So you love helping Austin Hardware find its unique voice and brand. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. So what's unique about Austin Hardware? You know, right now we're, we're getting into an age of e-commerce where mm -hmm. a lot of the consumers have already been there. Um, right. In our industry, when it comes to industrial distribution and industrial hardware, <clears throat> okay. you know, it's, it's not as common. And so for us to get ahead of it and for us to really – start not just targeting B2B, but B2C um, and a, a user-friendly experience online. That's the most exciting thing that we're differentiating ourselves with right now, mm. um, as well as, you know, our other services that we, we make sure we nail, like, mm -hmm. you know, vendor managed inventory so that, you know, our customers can always rely on products being replenished and things like that. And we have a great data analytic tool that allows us to hit those replenishments on time and review those with, with our customers. That's one of the big things that we have going on right now um, that set us apart. So who are your customers? Oh man, our customers are mostly OEMs, right? Our large customers are OEMs um, um, and you name it though. Um, they can be man, large, we have large customers, we have small customers, we have uh -huh. individuals, you know. Okay. So, Across the board, but OEMs, that's how the business got started, mm -hmm. and we bridged the gap between products and manufacturers, and we continue to do that. Oh, wow. Wow. So that, so you're not like a, um, a retail necessarily. I heard you say you're moving some into B2C, but it's mostly B2B, so you stand in that gap with the manufacturers and help them distribute and things like that, Then it's what you're really doing. Yeah, and we're really a partnership for them. So... Oh. You know, we have a, a full staff engineering team and okay. we will go in and, you know, at no cost to the customer, <clears throat> we'll go in and at times we've redesigned products um, or redesigned an existing product to fit a certain latch or to fit a certain hinge that gotcha. we partnered. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So, Man, that's exciting. awesome. So you guys uh, spend your time discovering needs and filling them. Constantly. Yep. That's, yeah. that's our thing. Yep. Wow. So has this business been around for a while, Tim? Since 1960. Mm. We've never been rocking it. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Since I was born before 1960, I would say, yes, it's been around for a while, right? Yeah. yeah. I won't ask that question again. I guess it hasn't been around for a while. Don't tell me it's as old as I am, right? <laughs> uh, right. That's awesome. So, so what gets you out of bed every day and charges you up about coming to work at Austin Hardware, Tim? Oh, man, that's a... That's a tough one to pinpoint. I, I would say just the, the fact that we have so many things <clears throat> in the mix right now that will launch us to that next level and, mm-hmm. and ahead of our competition that no matter what we're working on, like we're loaded right now, um, you know, especially on the marketing department, you know, our team has things locked and loaded that we're just working on, getting off the table, moving on to the next thing. And gotcha. each step is really just enhancing, you know, enhancing the website and telling our story, showing our products and, and doing it in a way that our competitors aren't right now. Mm. So, and, you know, we just got, um, you know, uh, we were able to reconstruct the team a little bit. So we have some great players now, you know, just ready to kill it. And they are, um, we've, we've done a lot this last year that, you know, I, I'm just so blessed that, to have them in here and help accomplish everything that we're doing right now. So it's great. Wow. So you're not only personally excited, you're excited for the team that you've been able to put together and that you lead. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's amazing. So how does your faith, you know, anytime we're working with, we're leading out with people trying to call out their divine design and help them fulfill their calling in the world. Um, How's that work for you in terms of your faith impacting your leadership style? You know, I think as as a a man of faith and, and as a Christian, mm-hmm. we, we have the Holy Spirit, right? And I think that that's probably the biggest thing, if I were to isolate, that tugs on me. If mm. You know, because I'm not perfect. You know, sometimes I may not react as I should emotionally, right? So my emotional intelligence, I'm, I'm constantly carving away. Because I'm, I'm a very passionate person, very direct. But at the same time, I think it's important for Christians, especially in leadership positions, to to be that powerful um, voice and to mm. to help others and to to make sure that you know we we can ask for forgiveness when we do step, and we should. And I think bringing that into the workplace and mm. you know that the team here, I think they know I'm direct. I think they know that I'm I'm very blunt sometimes. But at the same time. You know, we do one-on-ones. You know, Paul Flanagan, you had him on your, on on this one time, and mm-hmm. he probably mentioned this, but he incorporates one-on-one team team meetings, right? So every week there's a one-on-one meeting that I have with with our team, and we just talk about you know their weekend, we talk about their lives, and I think that's the place to go to mm-hmm. connect with the team because during the whirlwinds of work mm-hmm. and crazy, challenge, man, yeah, um, you don't see that side of people very mm-hmm. often. No, so very rarely. I think, you know, and I think that's uh, when when you're able to connect like that with the individuals and portray, you know, a softer side. I mm-hmm. think is very important because they know you're going to go to bat for them, and they know you're going to lift them up. And I think that's the most one of the most important things that you know a, a leader should do if you're put in charge of a team and you're responsible for, you know, their careers we need to lift them up. And that's what I try to do daily. So, Mm. so you go way beyond Austin hardware in terms of talking about here are our goals for the marketing department. You spend time each week with the marketing team one-to-one just building a relationship. That sounds a lot like what Jesus did walking around talking to people. Yeah. I'm probably not as good at it, but (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure. You know, he did it set is a pretty effective. high standard, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is effective, and you know, it's also a time that if you are if you are having challenges, to wash them out in private, right? Mm. Um, and I think that's an important thing too is to know that you care for these people, right? You care for everyone working for you, and you value what they're bringing to the table. But at times, you do have to confront things, right? And you have to try to to move past, push through conflict, just so that you know, it's not lingering over anyone's head. I mean, the, 
that's the best way I've found to do it, right? And it's easier to do that with the one-on-ones because, you know, it's something they look forward to and it's something I look forward to and, you know, we just learn and grow. Oh, absolutely. Together. Well, and it's easier to do when you have a relationship with someone, when you know what's going on in their life and you gives you a greater understanding, right? Matters of the heart as opposed to just being so task oriented. It is people who do these tasks, right? That achieve the corporate goal. And uh, so how did you come about investing uh, time in your team like this? Is this something Paul taught you or did you experience it somewhere else? Yeah, so I was, it, it definitely Paul taught me that. I mean, he, he has been a, a huge influence in my, in my life, my career. Hmm. A great example of a strong business mind and a strong Christian spirit, <clears throat> right? Hmm. And when, you know, he was here with me for a little over a year. So I, I was attached to his hip and we navigated <laughs> through, through change, you know, because Austin Harbor is incorporating this change and we really – you know, we want to value our employees. We want to mm. make sure that our customers, you know, know that we're doing the right things and that we're always mm. going to pull through for them. Right. Mm-hmm. And so there, there's waters to navigate and there's teams to build and mm. there's conflict and there's successes. And so it's all mm-hmm. these things that, you know, at least within the team that I was given, we could pause and take that time. And then he showed me that to <clears throat> kind of step back and and talk about something else other than all this change mm. because it and you know it makes a difference oh it really does and what you do is you redefine the conversation because so often at work we treat people like human doings you know just just get in there and get it done right all that other stuff you know who are you i need for you to work your punch list right, right. <laughs> but when we realize that at heart we were created to be human beings with preferences and personalities and over 7 billion of us here, no two of us exactly alike, right? That God created us. So discovering that uniqueness and really celebrating that uniqueness. And then you as a leader have the incredible opportunity to bring all this uniqueness together and to coalesce around a goal, a vision of marketing Austin hardware. What are some of the challenges you face as you bring these unique persons together in a team to, to go after that goal? You know, one of the, the biggest challenges I think that we found <clears throat> was the roles, right? And, and making, because we have really bright individuals on our team and, you know, to have go-getters who are good at their job, um, it's really important to know where the specialties lie <clears throat> and what the strengths are of each individual and what, what they think their strengths are, right? Because it's one thing to identify a talent mm. and, say, hey, you're strong in that. And it's another thing to ask them what they feel like, you know, they, they contribute the most and, and what area they contribute the most. So, mm. you know, I think, and, and this is where Paul really helped me, especially as a, um, you know, a newer marketing director. And, and this okay. was kind of a newer thing for me, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was important that we maintain influence, especially cross-functionally. We're doing a lot of projects where, um, for example, the other teammates may not report to me, right? They mm-hmm. report to, to other directors or other uh, managers. So right. you really have to be influential when you want projects to, to mm-hmm. be complete from start to finish. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's probably been the single greatest um, challenge for us because I mean, you're talking about seven different departments, five different departments um, working together on large scale projects. Um, and everyone out, everyone has its own agenda for those projects. So, to get those right and to, to, you know, hold people accountable, hold yourself accountable, hold the team accountable and, and still maintain that emotional intelligence when things get crazy, right? They get crazy. <laughs> yeah. They, That's they, the biggest they, challenge. They invariably get crazy and sometimes go beyond crazy to chaotic. Because uh, there's so, and, yeah, so many yeah. moving parts in what you're describing. Yeah, you know, there's there's procurement, there's mm-hmm. the warehouse, and, you know, there's engineering, there's mm-hmm. marketing, sales. You know, the sales and marketing alignment. Um, if I could just talk about marketing for a little little bit, <clears throat> um, to align those two teams is essential. Um, but at times, the agendas for for each department are just totally yeah, you know, a little different. You're right? not a yeah. Crazy, right? Right. So, I think that communication there. Um, what we've noticed and what we found is 
imperative. Um, it's imperative for campaigns that we want to launch. It's imperative for products that we want to be successful. Mm. Um, gathering market feedback, all mm. of that stuff. So I think um, to make sure that the marketing team and the individuals on that team have a great relationship with the sales team helps the communication. It helps people know that they can reach out and, you know, get support from one another and things like that. Mm. So how does your faith inform you in these times of chaos and craziness? Well, sometimes I miss the, the little tap on the shoulder, but you know, I think <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> I think yeah. it's an awareness I I think it's, it's really just a conscious effort to stay aware of your reality. And, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, we have the Holy spirit on our side. Right. And no. that's, that's another, you know, it's like a subconscious that exists that that'll pull and you don't always listen to it. Right. <laughs> yeah. But it's still there. And I think to recognize that, and that's what I, I when I talk about emotional intelligence, that's part of it, even though it's spiritual, mm -hmm. it's to know when, you're being tugged on and to know when things are getting chaotic. So you're not sucked into it. Mm. As soon as you allow yourself to, to be sucked into this whirlwind, it's tough to pull out. And yeah. we talk many times. It's, it's easier to lose influence than it is to gain influence. Just like mm. respect. <clears throat> um, well, you're reminding me of what Paul talked about in Romans 12, those first two verses where he talked about, you know, don't conform to the world, but instead transform. So what do you do to keep from conforming to the craziness and the chaos? What, what tactics do you employ in your daily work to help you step back and rise above and be transformative in those situations? Yeah. So I have a couple of things that I keep in the forefront of my mind mm -hmm. and that's, you know, I think processes are important um, mm -hmm. in business, right? I think that to attack a process rather than a person is mm -hmm. key for mm -hmm. any cross functional efforts, right? For anything that you're trying to do. And right. You know, if those processes aren't in place, it's really easy to say, well, so-and-so dropped the ball. And when, if there was a process in place that the checks and balances were there, <clears throat> they wouldn't be dropping a ball, right? Mm -hmm. It's probably not as organized as it needs to be um, mm -hmm. for the complexity of something. And so mm -hmm. that's one thing is, you know, if, if something it falls through the cracks, mm -hmm. fix it and mm -hmm. document why and try to figure out, you know, how to eliminate that gap. Right. right. I think so, that's, that helps in this relationship. Yeah. So the process instead of the person, so you're honoring the person by caring enough for them to develop a well-oiled process so that the process guides the person to doing his or her best. Right. I right. Like that. Just like in a relationship, right? Like with my wife, mm -hmm. um, it's important, I think, to attack the problem and in a business, that problem should be a you know, it's probably a process breakdown somewhere, right? So it's mm -hmm. kind of very similar in both the personal life and the work. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it, and it really keeps you from being in an adversarial relationship. You know, Jesus told us to love our enemies and pray for them. What you're describing really helps, helps us not become enemies in the first place because we're looking at the system and how can we create a system where people succeed instead of pointing fingers and blaming people. So you're really honoring Christ in each person and helping call out that divine design. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. And, you know, the, it, even small things like my wife and I, uh -huh. um, we started, we're very big fans of Dave Ramsey, right? Uh -huh. And we had a, a, all we need is a plan to get debt for. That's all anybody needs. Uh -huh, and, right. and it just so happens that Dave has a very structural, structured plan to do that. And yep. when we bought into it, we didn't, you know, veer left and right from it. We just really stayed on track and in three years, we were debt free besides the house. And mm. I think it's those disciplines to, to set yourself up for very little excuses. Right. And just to make sure that it's checks and balances, you prevent yourself from, you know, dropping the ball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really that's why Jesus put us in community with each other, calling out first to 12 and then 12 became 72. And then, it, it kept going. The church was birthed. We have faith positive fellowships across the country, right? That That's what they yeah. seek to do is to provide that action and accountability for people so that they can really live into the best of who God created them to be. And work is certainly an expression of that. And you mentioned your wife a couple of times. And uh, when we began this episode, we were talking about the birth of Victoria, who's about a year old now. So how do you, you know, you're given so much energy and time and attention 
to leading this dynamic marketing team for Austin Hardware. Tim, how do you save enough in reserve to go home and be the best husband you can be to Sarah, the best dad that Victoria needs? Five-hour energy drinks. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, so you know, how many of those do you consume a day? <laughs> right. right. Uh, um, no comment. But I could ask you, you your know, favorite flavor, right? <laughs> yeah. I think it's never perfect, you know. So right. I try I try not to work later than I need to, um, depending on you know what the situation is. There's there are gonna be times, right, where you have to pull. And mm -hmm. there, there's gonna be situations where you just have to get things done. Right. Um some situations can be avoided and that's when we talk about the process. That's when we talk about, you know, mm -hmm. not allowing the company to break down so that the employee's life can, can end when it, or the, the work part of that employee's life can end when it needs to. Mm -hmm. um, we're not slaves and we all, you know, want to enjoy the atmosphere when we come into work. So, you know, with, with the work life balance, um, it's actually not that hard for me. Um, I shut it off when I leave. And, but my phone's always available. So if, if anybody calls me work related, I still take it. And I, I still, especially if, the, if it's the team, right? Cause mm -hmm. I, I never know what that call is going to be. Yeah. So yeah. And you know, and I love to talk business. So <laughs> as long as I'm not neglecting my wife or my child, mm -hmm. it's really kind of just my day's not, my day's my day and I love every part of it. So well, what I um, hear Tim is that you have your priorities in a certain order and that, that yes. work gets the work energy and you make sure Sarah and Victoria get there to you as well. That's right. Yeah. yeah so it's kind of like this dance, right? You, you dance to the work music for a while and then the, they change the tune and then say so you go home and you be dad. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I hadn't always been like that. Um, mm, really? I've been very career oriented mm. my whole adult life. So, to, to step back, it's really only been the last, you know, six years probably where I haven't just focused on work. Um, and that really, I, th I think that's helpful though. I think that's helped me in my career. I think that's helped me with people because mm. like I, I met, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but I'm a very blunt individual. I'm mm. very direct. I like to, to hit the conflict and move on mm -hmm. because there's no use sitting on it because nothing right. gets done. Right. All right. right. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, and my wife has just helped me with that and helped me understand that. Um, mm. So, yeah. Yeah. Helpmate, right. She really completes you and yeah. makes you a better person. And then the two of you get to share that completeness with Victoria, which must be yeah. incredible. She's oh, one year old. So she, has she started to stand up or anything? Yeah. So she's now starting to pull herself up on things. Yeah. And, you know, I know that looks cute, but you know, after raising two daughters, just knock her down every time she stands up because nothing is safe in your house. After this. Dr. <laughs> Joey says knock. Knock Victoria down. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> but it is a thrilling time of life just to watch her develop and interact with you, developing that little personality. And, and you know, oh, as yeah. I'm standing here thinking about this, Tim, that's almost analogous to what you're doing at work. You're helping people get their legs up under them on new projects and things like that, discover more and more of who they are in Christ as, as part of God's divine design. Right. So they'll make right. mistakes. They'll fall down. You encourage them, you help them stand back up and move forward. So, so yeah. really you're in the business of helping people move forward at home and at work. Right. Yeah. And I think, and one, one important part of that is, is, you know, <clears throat> in, in doing that, it's important to stress that because we're, we're talking about great things right here, but right never perfect. So, I mean, I've had right. times where I've had to, had to call up, you know, another leader of a, another team and say, Hey, I apologize. I, sh I should have handled that better than I did in that mm -hmm. moment. And mm -hmm. I, I just didn't. And here's, you know, I'm passionate and <laughs> I, I want things to be done and, and working. So, yep. you know, it's important just to recognize that because there, there's always those ups and downs and, there are, and being humble enough to call somebody and apologize, man, that's huge and tells me a whole lot about the way you lead out, Tim. Yeah, I mean, it's been done to me, right? Mm. Um, and I think it's it's made some situations that could have been horrible, good. I, I mean, on the upside of things, it's just, 
Right. It needs to be said, especially when you talk about the Holy Spirit tugging on you. And oh, yeah. if you feel like you crossed the line, you should really get that out. Mm, right? Pay attention to that. Act on that. Go apologize and get it done. You know? Right. Yeah. Seems like Christ gave us that kind of methodology, didn't he? For how to handle disagreements. I love it. Go to your brother or yep. sister, right? Yep. You know, even Most if you're in the church about to drop a check in the offering plate, you know, <laughs> get up and go see him, right? Man, this is incredible. Tim Leeds is the marketing director for Austin Hardware and Supply located in Buford, Georgia. Uh, Tim Faith Positive Nation always wants to know from our guests something about their favorite Bible verse or Bible passage. Have you got one? I don't have a, one favorite, but I do have one that has been rel relative to me right now, right? Okay. Cool. And that's Second Timothy 1.7. Hmm. Um, my wife brought this up a while back, and, you know, it's something that I think leaders of companies need to, you know, here, right? So, you know, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And when we talk about that emotional intelligence, when we talk about, you know, leading teams and being a strong player for your team, teammates, right? That's what a Christian, you know, is. And I think right now that's, you know, a good verse for me. Oh man, that's an incredible thing. It's not, not a fear, right? It's, right. it's of power and love. And I, mm. Man, that's beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. I, I hadn't read that verse in a while. I really appreciate that. That that really focuses me on that verse. I'm gonna I'm gonna read that one tonight and again tomorrow morning just to get that one firmly planted in my head. Thanks so much. I appreciate that, man. So somebody in Faith Positive Nation is gonna want to reach out to you, Tim, because they want to catch your passion and they want to talk to you about leading teams and things like that. How's the best way for Faith Positive Nation to reach out to you? Got an email address you want to share? Yeah, uh, you can email me uh, right at it's Tim at Vizro, V I I Z R O dot com. And that's my personal email. Okay. Feel free to reach out and yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Tim Leeds is the marketing director for Austin Hardware and Supply located in Buford, Georgia. Tim, thank you so much for the gift of your time, your wisdom. Love your passion. Thanks for uh, sharing with us how faith and work makes a big difference. It, Austin Hardware and Supply and how you are faith positive, man. We appreciate that. And I am sure that we'll make sure Paul Flanagan catches this episode and uh, receives all the affirmation and shout outs that you gave him today too, because he's deserving of every right. single one of them. So I pray God's blessings on you and Sarah and Victoria as your family together and on your team there at Austin Hardware. God bless you, Tim. And thanks so much for today. Yep. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to Faith Positive Radio, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Suggest guests and ask questions when you email Dr. Joey at info at getpositive.today. And be sure to get your free gift of the five positive business conversations to have today. Coaching program at getpositive.today. Until next time, may God bless you with everything your heart can hope for and more than your mind can imagine.